Hi guys, I'm James and welcome to the channel. Today's video I want to talk to you about soldering irons. Back in May of this year I had a little accident with my soldering iron and this happened. It still worked and I was able to finish the job I was doing but in dropping it I clearly uh, caused a problem. You may have noticed or those of you who've uh, seen some of my other videos or seen I needed to use this soldering iron or a soldering iron recently and so I wanted to get this repaired. This leaves us with something of a paradox So, How do you re repair a soldering iron when the piece you need to replace has to be soldered in? The answer to that question is to buy a new soldering iron. So that's exactly what I did. I went and bought one of these uh, and it is essentially the same model. Turns out though, I've owned this 30 years and I thought actually what I ought to be doing is repairing it rather than replacing it. So what I then did was I went off and I bought some parts and I've now got everything I need in order to uh, repair it. So I've got a new heating element which is straight and I've got a new tip as well. I thought the old tips probably had 30 years of use. You could get a new tip as well. Um, I want also to give you a quick uh, overview of what's changed in 30 years of Antex soldering irons. Both of these are in XS25, so let's do that now. Now soldering irons are fundamentally fairly simple things, so it won't surprise you to learn that perhaps not very much has changed in 30 years. I think I bought this um, certainly when I was 14. Um, the obvious difference uh, from looking at them together is that they are, well they're exactly the same length. We've got a very different way of attaching this um, tip piece. And this, is cut, this old one has come with a hook, this one hasn't. But otherwise, they are essentially identical. Um, a slightly different profile on this piece of plastic. They're both 25 watt, and they're both an XS25. This one has got the burn-proof or melt-proof silicon cable, which I paid slightly extra for. And I don't remember getting this, which is a very simple stand, uh, when I bought my previous one. However, a change of plan because it seems, as I say, wasteful um, to have a new one when I could repair the old one. I've got the parts and um, I have also been lent this. Uh, let me bring this in. This is a soldering station, um, a much more involved piece of kit. But I'm going to use this to repair this and then I'm going to send this back, um, still within refund. When I damaged my soldering iron in May, I don't know why I didn't just speak to my good friend Steve and ask him to borrow his, if I could borrow his soldering iron back then. That is obviously the paradox solved. You just need to borrow a soldering iron from somebody to fix your broken one rather than buying a new one. So as I say, that's going back. It's still within uh, the refund period. Thank you, Amazon. And uh, I'm going to show you how to repair a 30-year-old Antex XS25 soldering iron. So the first thing we need to do is to get this heating element out and then we can start desoldering it and soldering the old one on and the new one on. So uh, I'm going to just remove the clip here. There's then a, a small posi or Phillips screw here which I need to remove. And then we need to remove the cable grip here. Now there would normally be a grub screw, plastic grub screw in there. I don't know where mine's gone, lost in years ago I'm sure. So this needs to come out and it's just an interference fit there. And that then enables us to remove the heating element in this direction. There we go. So then what we have is just three simple joints that we need to desolder here. And then we can bring in the new heating element, which is this one here, and just solder it on again. So let's open this up, get that desoldered. With everything exposed, then it's just a case of twisting these cables so we can remove this plastic cord grip. So then that pulls out here, like that. And then we have our three joints that we can desolder. I could, of course, just simply clip these wires off. Um, but in the, seems like a good opportunity to do 
uh, do this job with the soldering station. It's my neutral off. It's my earth off. Let's just rotate that a bit. And there we go. All three wires just removed. So this part now is junk. Um, I have a new uh, tip because of the new style of fitting. That's the, the collar that they no longer use, this bit here. Um, and that, as we can see, is now completely ready for the bin. So junk for that. Part number for the heating element for this iron, an XS25 230 volt, is here, E580010. I show you on here it's marked with the uh, this longer pin is the earth then we've got N for neutral over here and L for live so in, that's everything we need to be able to resolder our three wires back on and get this back up and working again Just prep some of the wires off camera just to tin them, make sure they're good. And to just set this up in the little jaw holder thing. And now we just need to do each wire individually. So let's, let's start with the earth. This, we get the other ones ready. Try a live here. You'd need two pairs of hands when you're doing soldering, I find. one okay solder joints done Let's see if we can get this cable clamp to work C cable grip Where was it? That slips in like that. And then just a case of twisting these wires so that they sit nicely. Like that. And then this, where's the hole? There's the hole. Slots in like, let's move that out of the way. So that then slots in like that. Holes lined up for our screw. Pop our screw in there. Make a slight tweak. There we go, and then we just bring our cord grip back in. 
And that, as I say, it was just an interference fit like that. In terms of the tip, I've gone for a 50 plated bit, B005060. It's just, oh no, these are just a open. And then, well, that's interesting, isn't it? It's got a sort of pentagonal grip into inside. And then that just fits over the end like that. There we go. Then we can reattach the clip. And let's plug it in, see if it works. I've had the soldering iron plugged in a few minutes now. And let's see whether it's working. Quick test with the solder. Yeah, all good. I remember at school in electronics club, they used to say you could always tell if a soldering iron was working by smelling it, which is definitely true. So, again, a really nice simple fix that one, um, and that paradox is solved by just borrowing a soldering iron rather than buying a new one. In terms of cost, I paid thirty pounds for that on Amazon a few weeks back. And in turn, and the cost of the spare parts that I got, so just a reminder, that's the heating element that came in that packet and the new tip that came in that packet, that was £18.50. Now I bought that on eBay from um, a, a seller who turns out to be Antex themselves, trading under a slightly different name. I'll put the link in the description below. So instead of paying £30, if you've got a serving iron that needs a repair, it's £18.50 direct from Antex via eBay. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that's mostly helpful and do look out for more content coming to the channel soon. Thanks guys.